A solid basis in international affairs has been the enduring alliance between the U.S. and U.K. Together on several international initiatives, they share their experiences and beliefs. Because of the intricate network of diplomatic, economic, and cultural ties that developed between these two countries as they tackled major global crises jointly, they are sometimes referred to as special allies. What makes the situation intriguing, however, is this recent development that has taken many by surprise and brought an air of secrecy to the relationship between the United States and Britain. In today's video, we'll get into that very topic, but hold on a second. Clerk Sense may be yours by clicking the like button and subscribing. We really appreciate your support, so let's get straight to the point. During the September 2023 G20 summit, the US and its allies, including the EU, did something really intriguing. France, the German Empire, India, the Italian. In a major statement, Saudi Arabia and the UAE joined together to form the IMC, which stands for the India, Middle East and Europe Corridor. IMC, what's going on? Playing the role of a go-between in the Indo-Pacific and Eastern Europe, with an eye on West Asia. It's all part of a larger scheme to cause a stir in Ukraine. Let your mind wander to a combination of many modes of transportation. There are certain bumps on the road to digital technology and clean hydrogen pipelines. Dealing with geography is one of the obstacles that IMC is preparing to meet. For what reasons, including logistics, geopolitics, rivalry and regional security, is the United States so committed in this? They want to have a pivotal role in determining the security and economic frameworks of Europe. Improving security and commercial networks that support Western objectives is the plan. And you know what? As challenging as the situation is, Gaza is, President Joe Biden has vowed to prioritize IMC. Biden emphasized the significance of IMC in his foreign policy address on October 19th. He views it as a key actor in fostering stability, generating employment opportunities, and decreasing conflict. Including a reference to IMC in his speech shows how vital it is to his approach to foreign affairs. While other European allies like Rome, Paris, and Berlin are deeply entangled in the Gaza war, it is puzzling that America's geopolitical closest friend, the United Kingdom, seems to be avoiding the IMC. Whether it's talks of British forces in Gaza after Israel's attack or Tony Blair's role as humanitarian coordinator, London seems to be playing second fiddle. The UK's lack of participation in IMC is perplexing. For America, it's a major event. Experts in international affairs are scratching their heads, describing it as a minor gaffe that requires correction. The United States is attempting to play matchmaker by bringing together the European Union, the United Kingdom, and North America in order to counteract the influence of Russia and China. Some experts are agreeing, stating that it makes sense for Washington to invite London for the IMC. The idea is that it may bring Britain closer to the US and the EU while also elevating the country's status. With London's participation in the UK and its position in the Australia-UK-US security bundle, a robust British presence is important in an ever-changing global scene. Joint sixth-generation stealth fighter project between Italy and Japan. The United States should encourage a closer partnership between the United Kingdom and the European Union EU, due to the common objective of maintaining peace and security in Europe. Although the UK isn't eager to enter the EU single market or customs union just yet, IMC might serve as a platform for organized negotiations between Brussels and London, perhaps enhancing UK-EU ties. An opportunity for deeper relationships may arise as a result of IMC. Now think about the fantastic chance that IMC presents for global Britain to strengthen its ties with important countries like India after Brexit. British prosperity has been overshadowed by that of Saudi Arabia and the UAE. Witness their encounter for yourself. In March 2022, in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine and Western sanctions against Russia, Prime Minister Boris Johnson, together with the leaders of Saudi Arabia and the UAE, discussed strategies to enhance oil output. Allow me to explain. Johnson's trip failed to elicit any concrete promises from Saudi Arabia, 
but in the United Arab Emirates, it presents a balanced view of the UK-UAE partnership, with Abu Dhabi and Riyadh placing more value on the UK's size than the contrary. It's a really dynamic situation, isn't it? The United States and the European Union see IM as a wonderful opportunity to combat and regulate the phenomenon. China's expanding influence in the MENA region, Washington and Brussels are becoming apprehensive due to China's significant regional activities, particularly its Belt and Road Plan. In an effort to diversify their economies away from China, they have formed PGI, the G7 Partnership for Global Infrastructure Investment, and the EU's Global Gateway. Their secret weapon is IMC, which was debuted at the G20's PGI gathering. The Chinese saw it as a means to influence regional powers away from Beijing's control and actively shape South Asian and Middle Eastern futures, but there's always a catch. Middle Easterners have other ideas. For the Gulf monarchies, the International Monetary Cooperation IMC, is less of a challenge to China's military might and more of an opportunity to show their economic and strategic mettle in the eyes of the United States and the European Union. This is because they are not interested in taking a stand against China and are instead committed to multipolarity and expanding their relationships according to their own interests. Indeed, it has the potential to deepen some current alliances, maybe make them reconsider their close relationship with Beijing, but they aren't prepared to sever ties with China just yet. As a group, let's discuss India. With tensions between China and India reaching unprecedented heights, they are getting into the IMC game because of their feud with Beijing and Islamabad. Since the Gulf states are home to a large portion of India's diaspora, India's recent courtship of Middle Eastern nations has been strategically important in its struggle for dominance in South Asia and beyond. IMC serves as the icing on the cake. What a relief to have your fan club rooting for you. With its tense relationship with Pakistan still fresh in India's mind, this is an attempt to balance China's expanding influence in the Middle East. The International Mountain Corridor, IMC, is an ideal substitute for the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. Conflicts over territory in the corridor have impeded India's ability to reach both Europe and the Middle East. Why would Britain ever contemplate becoming a member of the corridor when IM has the potential to be a game-changer? lowering obstacles and making it simpler for India to compete economically with the rest of the world. Keeping the Mediterranean section of the corridor stable with Cyprus territory and bases is a major factor, say the analysts. As tensions escalate regarding Egypt, the United Kingdom has considerable influence in the Mediterranean area, the Mediterranean countries of Turkey, Greece, and Cyprus. In contrast to Paris's more muscular posture, which including striking a military contract with Greece, Britain is opting for a diplomatic approach. London is maintaining its composure by bolstering ties with non-IMC corridor countries like Egypt and Turkey. Thus, this new economic order may be just what the Mediterranean area needs. The United Kingdom has a stabilizing influence. Countries may be able to transform their economic might into geopolitical might via the corridor, but there are obstacles in their way. We still don't know all the specifics, but one thing is certain. These nations' ability to connect their areas determines how effective the corridor will be. In order to establish up transportation networks spanning vast distances and diverse terrains, they will need to make significant investments and cooperate together, not to mention the difficulties with infrastructure and technology. Nevertheless, wait on, the true labyrinth to overcome is the complex political instability in the Middle East. The region's instability was further shown by the recent fighting in October 2023 between Israel and Hamas. They need to improve their dispute settlement skills if they want to keep the economy humming and investors, particularly in the EU, from becoming nervous. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Please don't be shy with your feedback. It is highly valued. Speculate away from here. If you're interested in global news, particularly as it pertains to economics and geopolitics, we have a video for you. Keep watching, and I'll see you in the next one.